So this is a class about the applications of scientific computation. And uh, like the most introduction classes you have, um, we will go over the people of the class, of the goal of the class, and the, the gradings, the statistics, so whether there's a final exam, or so project, something like this, to decide if you want to quit the class. Okay, but uh, now we will not do this. We will leave it on next Wednesday. Um, I will let you know the leading TA for now, this is a Yu. He's right. also a PhD student of La Professor Ladislav Kavam and uh, he will be the most helpful person that you can reach to, to answer your questions and uh, answer que also answer questions on Piazza. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> let you know. And uh, then um, we are going directly go to the MATLAB 101 class, which is a, a very powerful, MATLAB is a very powerful tool for this class. It's not the ultimate goal of the of this class, but uh, um, you will make very, like you, you will use it as a very helpful tool for, for all the uh, equations and uh, uh, solvers in the class. You will find it, it will be very helpful. So I'll go over a little bit about MATLAB 101, mainly in this class, it will be short. Um, before I get started, how many of you have already used the MATLAB before? It's not bad, and <laughs> Cool, so now uh, MATLAB is an interactive programming environment. It stands for matrix laboratory. So basically everything in MATLAB is a matrix and uh, it will help you to do lots of uh, numerical computation, data analysis, uh, visualization, and it's very powerful so you can even use it as a programming tool so you can, do, you can, develop, you can develop your own algorithm on MATLAB. So basically you can think of MATLAB as a calculator, but also it's very powerful, so basically you can do anything on that and in, in MATLAB. Um, if you have your MATLAB, that's fine. If you don't have it, please don't buy it from the bookstore because it's a little bit expensive. Uh, there will be annual licenses for the students enrolled in EAS 205 and then maybe some more classes. Now, alternatively, if you don't have it in, installed on a computer yet, you can use MATLAB for free in any of the SES labs. For example, in, a, in, a, in more building and also in Tom building, both of the SES lab, you can, you can use MATLAB for free. Um, so basically, it's not a goal. Uh, 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 that's why we put MATLAB introduction in our first class. And uh, it, it's just a tool that uh, can help you um, maybe understand a little bit of, the, of the, what's, what's the class going on and the get, most importantly, to get your hands-on experience with those uh, real linear algebra problems. And the course will include a sequence of programming projects in MATLAB, that's why you need to do, uh, that's why you need to learn it today. And again, it's not a, again, this course is not a programming course, it's, uh, it's more fundamental. So it's more about uh, the, the series and uh, uh, the, 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 the series behind those programs you will need to get. Okay, so, MATLAB. I will go over the variables and the operations in MATLAB and uh, talk something about uh, the the con control statements in MATLAB. And then there's a little bit there's a little trick called vectorization in MATLAB, which can makes you your program in MATLAB much much faster. Uh, at the end, I will talk something about uh, how to make a function and then make a script in MATLAB and then how to plot things and how to debug things. Um, this is, this is my MATLAB, it's a, it's a 2010 version, and uh, probably you get a newer one, but uh, uh, most of the workspace are just to look like this. So this is a command window, uh, which, uh, just, which is just to look like your, your uh, calculator. You can, you can put uh, random numbers into it, you can ask MATLAB what's, uh, what's uh, 1 plus 1, whether it equals 2 or 3, and just uh, put it in a command window, and the MATLAB will show the result to you immediately. And this is uh, the workspace, which can list all your variables in the memory in MATLAB. You can, uh, you can reuse all the variables that you have. 
And also, this is very important. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's called a variable editor and, a, uh, and also script editor. Most of the time that you spend with your, with your MATLAB will, will, will be in this editor because uh, you will edit your own functions and the script. And again, this is the current folder that you, that you are storing all the functions and scripts like this. Um, MATLAB, for a more detailed explanation, so can you see the screen clearly? Is it large enough? A equals to one? <laughs> Something like this? Okay, so this is a command window. Uh, basically anything that you can do in your calculator can be done there. Like one plus three multiplied by five, this is uh, yeah, 16. <laughs> and uh, it will get your results immediately in, in command window. And also, all the variables that you have, like uh, I, I just put a equals to one, maybe b equals to b equals to two. Those variables will be here in the in, in your workspace, which uh, which lists all the va variables in your memory. And also, I'm gonna you if you don't have the editor and the script editor open, I'll you can you can open it in a in a desktop and editor and uh, variable editor so the variable editor can help you um, can help you visualize all the variables you have if I double click A saying that A is a one by one matrix and the value is one I can have a more complicated matrix like one two three four so you can you can basically visualize everything the value of everything in the in the variable editor and also we have a script editor um, I will talk about it later because uh, we will use it a lot in, in a class today. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a MATLAB workspace. So let's talk about the variables we're going to use in MATLAB. So basically, most of the variables you're going to use are double precision floating points. So even if you, you, you just type A equals to 1, it looks like an integer. And uh, but uh, you, when you look at the detail about what a is, a is still a double. Of course, you can you can also um, have your logical, which is a boolean type, and also maybe unsigned or signed integers with a one or two or four bytes. But you need to uh, specify it. You call MATLAB. You're going to 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 have those types uh, explicitly. And of course, you can have the the strings like an array of char. And uh, um, for MATLAB, it's uh, mostly used for matrix operation. And you can, you can definitely put 1D sc scalar, which is a one by one matrix, or 1D vector, which uh, can be either a column vector or a row vector. It can be an n by one matrix or one by n matrix. Of course, you can have a, you can, you can have a 2D matrix, just to make sure that uh, all the elements in the, in the matrix are stored in a column major. And also maybe multi-dimensional matrix. Imagine you have an image with RGB channels, so it will be a resolution multiplied by three. It's like a, if I have a 1024 by 768 uh, size image, so the matrix size will be 124 times uh, 768 times three. Something like this is a three-dimensional matrix. Or if you if you want to calculate the light in, light intensity in the room. It will also be a three-dimensional matrix. Um, okay, so let's see how how are we gonna call those one uh, uh, D yep, vectors. Uh, this is your script editor. So basically, you can write anything you want and uh, execute it or you can just uh, simply copy and paste it into the command window so um you can list a list of numbers like i did and then it will automatically give you a row a a, a row vector or you can separate them using uh, using comma. It will also give you a row vector. 
uh, what if you want to get a column vector? So the the easiest thing is just to separate elements using the, using this uh, semicolon, and it will automatically give you a uh, a row vector. And also, you can you can do it uh, um, you can do similarly to to initialize a two D matrix. So for now, M is a two D matrix. One, two, three, four, six, seven, nine, eight, seven, eight, nine. And uh, uh, it, the, 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 the matrix is, uh, although you are, you are um, initialize the matrix using a row majored way, the matrix will automatically store everything in a column majored way. So for a more memory efficient usage, just to try to use column operations for the matrix more often than the row operations of a matrix. Also, we can initialize a vector by another technique. So if you if you want a, a, a simply a vector with uh, equally spaced entries, you can simply do this. So um, this will automatically get you a vector from one to ten and equally spaced and default value the de default space size is uh, is one. Or you can specify the step size by adding an element between the start and the end. So then it will already give you a equally spaced uh, array with uh, step size equals to 0 0.1. Okay, easy. Sure. So let's go to some more interested topics, which is an, uh, the operators in MATLAB. So there's a uh, Tons and tons of operators, operators in MATLAB, and uh, for now, I'm going to mainly talk about uh, three kinds of op operations: the indexing operator, the logical operator, and numerical operators. So basically, indexing operator helps you to read and write the elements in an array or in a matrix, and the logical operator helps you to do those uh, binary operations, or um, it will happens in your um, logical statement. And also the numerical arrays is uh, what you did. Uh, mo most of the people have done before in your calculator. You can simply add or minus or multiply or divide an array by itself. And uh, also the divide has a uh, left divide and the right divide. The um, I'll, I will show it. Uh, I will show it to you. So you can be more clear about what are the operations in MATLAB. So um, this is uh, the indexing operator for a um, 1D array. You can just use the uh, the parentheses as the index indexing operator. For now, the x vector is this: 1, 7, 9, 0 0.7, negative 4.5, and 12.34. And uh, uh, if you want to simply get the second element of this array, you can you can use uh, t like t is my temporary variable. T equals to x2. And then it will get, give you the result seven, which is uh, the second element of your array. And uh, um, for indexing a 2D array, it's, uh, it's also not that hard. You have the M matrix, which is a one, the, 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 this matrix. If I want to index the first row and the second column, you can simply add M12 to indexing, and it will automatically give you the element there. Um, there are some bad indexing examples in MATLAB. So in MATLAB, because it's, it, which is originally written in Fortran, um, the index starts, with what, starts at 1. So if you're familiar with C++ or Java, which starts at 0, you probably will uh, come across some problems if you're indexing the 0 the zero element in MATLAB, and also uh, if you are indexing something, you can if you want to read something out of the the end of the array, it will also give you an error. And of course, you cannot index maximum number of fractions. For writing, it's the same thing. You can index in whichever element you want. It comes with the reference. Of, of that element, and then you can simply write it to other another values that you want. 
if I rewrite the third row and the second column of the original matrix M, and you can see I, I can rewrite the element here. And pulling out a subset of an array is uh, is more interesting to me because uh, usually if I want if I want to a, a cluster of an original array instead of just a single one number, um, I can I can use the uh, I can use this grammar to pull out a subset of the array. So um, I still have the x, which is this array, and uh, if I want to pull out the the first one, the third one, and the fifth one of the array, I can just uh, type another small array there and it will pull out for me immediately. Um, also, we can't um, dynamically adding elements to an array. So for now, my, the, the size of my current array, x, is 1 by 6. But we, if we really want the, uh, the, the a's, element of the array to be 0 0.5 it's still allowable it's still allowed and you can say you can see that uh, um, the system will automatically allocate the memory for you and add the last element that you put to to 0 0.5 and it, it also works for matrix If I want the, the fourth column and the fourth row element in the matrix to be 200, uh, or the originally 3 by 3 matrix will be expanded to 204 by 41. But this operation is not recommended because uh, the system will dynamically add in memories to, to the array, which means the operations will be slow. So if you know the size of the array or the matrix in advance, you can just uh, allocate the memory to it in advance. So this is indexing. And also we have logical operators. So an a logical operator returns to you something 0 and 1, which is a false or true. So um, the x array is uh, 1, 7, 8, 0. Point Seven, then some negative value, positive, zero, positive value, and um, the, the logical operator just returns the result whether this statement is true. And uh, similarly, we have the larger or smaller, equal, not equal operators, and also we can combine those results, those logical results using and or 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 not or xor. The interesting thing is uh, those logical array can be used as indices as well. So if I want to find all the elements in my array which are, which are larger than 1, this statement will give you a quick result. So what it did is first get a logical array that uh, x is larger than 1, which is uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And then put all the uh, values indexed with one uh, from the original array of x and pull out the values of it. So it's a it's a fast way to pull out some of the elements that you want from a way from an array very quickly. It uh, it will be a a a, a, a shortcut. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, and also some numerical operations. So um, you, you, you definitely you do know the, the basic numerical operations, like if I have uh, x equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, y equals to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You can simply add or minus between two vectors. But uh, yes? So I didn't get the grammar for x as um, bigger than 1. OK. Is it like x squared? Oh, it will pull out. Uh, let me see. So, so now 
x become a simpl sim simpler um, vector, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I have this logical expression, x larger than 3, and the results will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, which means that uh, the fourth and the fifth uh, element of the original array x is, uh, uh, meets this statement, and uh, the other elements of the x does not meet this statement. Oh, this, like, like the yeah, this is uh, like a Boolean operation. Yeah, and you can, you can use this Boolean operation as an indexing array. So if you are using this, so inside, inside your indexing, it will be this array, all right? Zero, 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 one, one. And it will find all those ones which are set, which is says that uh, this operation is needed, and uh, then pull out the elements from the original X. So, um, so now both of the, the vectors are, uh, uh, both, both x, y are, are, are row vectors. And uh, what if I want to multiply them point-wisely? Say if I want a z vector, and the, the first element is 1 by 5, the second element is 2 multiplied by 4, and the third is 3 by 3, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the original uh, multiplication operation will not do this because uh, it treats those two vectors as matrices. So if you want to multiply an n by 1 matrix by an n by 1 matrix, it will throw you in dimensional error. So if you want to multiply them pointwise, point wisely, you can just use this operation just to put a, dot, put a period uh, mark before your operation. Then a, a two equally length operators, e equally sized, so two equally sized vectors can be can be done piecewise. Like, okay. And the at the end of the operation, I will say something about uh, transpose. So, have you ever heard of transpose before? Okay. If I have a matrix, m equals to it's a random five by three matrix. It looks like this way. It uh, it has five rows and uh, five rows and three columns. And if if I want to simply transpose it, which means uh, I'm gonna change the order of row and column. So this is the M transpose. You can you can you can use uh, this um, um, apostrophe mark, this one to transpose a matrix. And it also can turn your row vector to a column vector and vice versa. Okay, flow control. After you know the basic operations and the basic variables in MATLAB, you want, probably you want to get your hands on and uh, um, program for some uh, uh, toy examples. So um, in order to do those, you, need, you, know, you also need those uh, um, uh, flow control statements. So you can use if, else if, and else and the statement in MATLAB to choose one expression you, you want. And also, you can use a switch case otherwise statement to directly choose an expression. This is a faster way, but it, it works especially on integers and strings. So if, if we, it, probably, if you want to choose the value of a double precision point, it's probably not a good idea because uh, um, and um, if you want to compare if two double precision points values are equal, there's numerical errors and uh, it probably will go out of your mind. So we have some uh, flow control statement. So here I'm going to make x a random variable and y equals zero. And you can say, see, if I want to, this state, state control, this uh, flow control statement will, will automatically see if x is uh, smaller than 0 0.3, or it's uh, between 0 0.3 to 0 0.6, or otherwise. And then it will get your, get, get your y value down. And similarly, we have a switch case otherwise statement. So I have an input number, which is an integer lie between negative 10 and uh, negative 20 and 20. 
and I can switch the value of this input number and uh, to see our input string becomes other value because it's a negative 12 but uh, then the fourth into any category of my cases also loop it has similar for loop or while loops as uh, any other programming languages like C++ or Java and uh, I have a question have you so is there anyone haven't used any kind of programming language before okay so you must know you, what I'm talking about, like the if, else, and the switch case, or the full loop, while loop, right? Okay, so <coughs> the for loop and the while loop will, will, will do loops until the, the condition expired. And uh, both of them are breakable. You can add a break statement to terminate a for loop or a while loop whenever you want. Vectorization. Uh, this is an interesting part because uh, usually the MATLAB operations on scalar types are slow. However, those MATLAB matrix and vector operations are usually optimized for parallelism. For example, if you want to add a um, a thousand by one vector by another a thousand by one vector, you can actually do them at the same time. You don't need to make a large for loop and add them one by one together like your C++ or Java program. So in fact, MATLAB, inside in MATLAB, it has already optimized for this kind of parallelism. The, the MATLAB will use uh, uh, the multi-thread function or even your GPU to, to maxima, maximize this uh, parallelism. And, uh, the and those MATLAB are just to call it uh, vectorization to make it cool. So uh, let's have a toy example. If you have a very large vector, and you want, you want to find the indices of all elements that are larger than both of its neighbors. Right? So for example, if you have a, a, an array like 1, 2, 4, 3, then I want to find the, the third element, which is 4, that is larger than both of its neighbors and all other, very, all other, uh, <clears throat> and all other elements will fail this test. So this is the, the, the for loop version that I can never saw. I will I will loop the index from the second element to the last to to the n, n minus one element of the array, and compare if it's larger than its previous element and it's larger than its uh, next element. If uh, if this statement is true, then I will have another logical array to say okay this is true. Then. At, at, at last, I can simply use this array B1 to, to index my A array and pull out, pull out all the elements that are larger than both of the neighbors. All right? It looks like there's uh, nothing wrong in this loop. But in MATLAB, uh, people have preferred to do it in another way. There is a vector right version. Uh, I'm going to duplicate a, an array from my original array. With, uh, that offsets my all the elements to to uh, <clears throat> by, by 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 plus one, and also I'm gonna do another array which is called a next, which offsets all the elements by next minus one. All right. So um, can do do can you see those uh, those two arrays? If uh, if my a vector is one two And uh, the a previous array will be duplicate a1 and offset uh, the all of the other ones by by plus one. So it's one, two, two, three, four, six. And my a next array will be an op an offset forward, which is uh, one. Which is uh, two, three, four, six, five, five, something like this. All right. So, so then I can I can simply do three logical comparisons to say, okay, I'm gonna um, immediately compare 
all the values which is uh, larger than its previous value and all the values which is uh, larger than, uh, than the next value of it and uh, uh, use the AND operator to combine those two logical operators together and finally we can get B2. So you can imagine that B2 should be equal to B1. All right. Uh, I have it in my MATLAB. So now I have a very long array which has a uh, hundred thousand elements in my A. So A is a random vector which is a very 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 long. I'm gonna do the for loop imp implementation. I'm gonna do it several times and you can see See the time elapse is about uh, uh, 0.14 seconds. Not that bad, but uh, you can also see the vectorization implementation of it, which is uh, two orders of magnitudes faster than the previous for loop implementation. And then last, I'm going to verify the answer whether b1 equals to b2. So it, it will pass my verification and the saying that B1 and B2 are exactly the same. All right. So for most of the for loop operations, you can just uh, using some uh, uh, reshape matrix or, or some uh, duplication of, uh, of the original vector to make it uh, vectorize vectorizable. And uh, it will greatly improve the performance of your MATLAB uh, programs a lot. Any questions about the vectorization part? Great. And at last, not at last. And then it's uh, functions and scripts. So, so basically you can see scripts as uh, more like a reusable version of your code in the console window if you don't if you don't want to type your console window again and again, you can simply put it into the script and uh, execute the script, and then all the local variables will be saved and you can reuse it for your future usage. And functions are more flexible and extens extens extensible because uh, uh, it looks something like this. So this is a, a simple script. Um, if I have an an equation which is that x a x squared plus b x plus c equals to zero, and uh, I want to see what are the two solutions of this equation if it exists. All right. So um, I can simply have a solve quadratic function and pass all the elements a b c into that, and this is my solve quadratic function. It looks very like your C++ function. It takes ABC as an input value, and but but in MATLAB it can return multiple values like solution one and solution two. All right. Okay, and plotting. MATLAB is used a lot when you want to visualize your data, and uh, uh, to me, it is more flexible than uh, plotting by other tools like your Microsoft Excel or something like uh, this. We can see some plotting examples using MATLAB. So for now, I have an array. It has uh, 100, maybe more than 100 elements, which goes from 0 to 10, and the step size is 0 0.1. And y is a sign value of the x, respectively. And z is a cosine value of it. I can simply plot what y and z looks like by some plotting command. So you can see then the, the red line is a sign value of x, where, where the x-axis is x and uh, the blue line is a cosine value of x. Also, we can use it to visualize a sparse matrix. So, if I have a random matrix A, which is a sparse matrix, 
and I want to visualize uh, what is the non-zero pattern in this matrix, you can just simply use spy A. Hmm? Sorry. So this is my figure. Those blue dots means uh, the element is not zero, and white part means that element is zero. Although the matrix is very large, it's a thousand by a thousand, but you can still see the pattern of the matrix looks like this. So um, um, it can be used as a very good convenient debugging tool to see if you really have the, the, the shape of the matrix right, because for, for most of the, the uh, numerical computation problems, your thrust matrix will have the sort of patterns that you can, you can predict. You can't predict the elements inside the, the matrix, but you can sort of predict the, the sparsity pattern of the matrix. And also, we can visualize uh, visualize a, a 3D data by mesh. So, if I have a U, which is a complicated function of both x and y, you can you can draw something like your uh, like a terrain like this one. This is so this is mesh grid. And also for some. Uh, other purposes in MATLAB, probably you want a bar graph or you want a cur curvature graph, and you can just use bar or, or plot to, to, to plot the data. And debugging. And like all your other programming languages, MATLAB programs also need a debugger. <laughs> And uh, it will be really painful if you don't know what, how, how to debug your programs. So most of the debugging process in MATLAB is in this uh, script editor. If I zoom it out, out a little bit, you can execute your scripts and then set breaking point or cancel a breaking point like this. And also step into a function or step out of a function. I'm going to still use my simple script. So for now, uh, I want to see if uh, everything inside my function solve quadratic is correct. I can just simply set up breaking point here and go to my simple script, execute it. And you can see there's a green arrow on that, which means that uh, uh, this, the debugger stopped at uh, that uh, expression. And the for, for your workspace, it becomes your staff, which, uh, which, uh, which have all the local variables in this function. And you can, you can, you can just visualize uh, by double clicking them to see if the, the temporary values are correct or ABCs are correct. And you can go it on to step, to go to the next step to see whether solution one is correct. And also you can yeah you can go out of the function by stepping out. So it will go go to your script too. I think it's very convenient because uh, you can visualize everything inside that of uh, setting watch instead of like that chain, setting watches in, in your C debugger. Okay, other stuff. So um, at a glance, MATLAB can only be used to operate uh, those numerical data you want to, um, but uh, however, everything is data. So we can manipulate sound data because uh, sound is basically frequency plus a 1D amplitude vector. And we can, we can manipulate an image because uh, a, a grayscale image is basically a 2D matrix uh, saying that uh, what is a great grayscale of every in pixel, and also a multi multiple channel images are, are just basically a 3D matrix, it's a resolution times the, the number of channels. And also text, text can also be manipulated because it's, an, it's basically an ASCII code a anyway. So I have had interesting examples of uh, manipulate those things in MATLAB. So this is an example with an audio. I'm gonna load a handles hallelujah into MATLAB. So I'm gonna load handle. 
and uh, there okay I'm gonna clear my workspace and load it again so there are two variables called FS which is the frequency and Y which is the amplitude of my soundtrack I can plot it out using MATLAB plot so this is a soundtrack that you used to see. It's basically a one D data, and you can even, you, know, you can even hear it. You can hear an array by sound. Why? And it sounds like. Uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> Okay, and then basically because this this is just the data, so you can you can you can manipulate it anyway. If I want to lower the volume of the of the middle of the soundtrack a little bit, I can just multiply by 0 0.1 to to it, uh, and then uh, let's plot it again. You can see that the, the, the this middle part of the soundtrack has been uh, has been lowered, and uh, let's play it again. <laughs> yeah, you can you can manipulate sound whatever you want. And also it can read an image. So I have the famous cameraman image. I can read it and show up and show it in the image tool. If this is a MATLAB image tool, then uh, you can you can change the grayscale. You can a a analyze everything in in the picture, and uh, basically and uh, basically it's also a two D array, so you can manipulate it to whatever you want. You can do canny edge detection. Basically, it's just a convolute with a kernel. Then uh, uh, you can see all the edges or all the feature points of the image, and uh, also it works for multi dimensional arrays. And text is basically also a numbers. If I have a a string which is a hello word, and I can turn it to unsigned integers, so it becomes uh, its ASCII code. And you can you can manipulate the ASCII code to to whatever you want. Okay. Last but not least, so there are. Also, some of uh, the useful commands in MATLAB, like uh, CLC, is clear the console, console, and clear is clear the whole workspace, flush everything in your memory, and uh, and in ANS is the most recent answer that you get, and uh, uh, Y is a hidden Easter egg that you can try. Uh, for for mod commands, you can just refer to any kind of MATLAB commands uh, files. And sometimes when you go to a infinite loop that you want to stop the execution, or maybe your, your program is too slow to execute, you can just simply simply click Control C or Control Break if you are a Windows or Linux user, or if you are a Macintosh platform user, you can use a command plus period to to stop the execution. Um, the uh, MATLAB, the documentation of MATLAB is very nice. You can you can hit F1 on uh, doc plus your function name to get the help of, uh, of your MATLAB function. And Google is always your friend. Also, if the, your question is related on this course, you can definitely raise it on Piazza, and uh, our powerful TA will an answer it for you. Um, so some of the materials are from uh, Professor C.G. Taylor. <laughs> and um, go to Piazza, register yourself, and uh, the course materials of today will all be, will be all uploaded to Piazza, and then you can. And also, I have attached my my script to that, so you can play with that. And uh, if you have any questions, just raise it on Piazza. I think it's a short class. We can end it earlier. So uh, next week, next next Monday is Labor Day, so next Wednesday, Professor Ladislav Kavlan will officially take over the class and uh, um, start your journey to linear algebra on uh, um, engineering project. Thank <laughs> you.